All right, Jay Clark here. We are with Norm Francis. We've got a really cool uh, vintage Vinco racer for you. It's a 1971 Mako K model. And Norm's going to talk to us a little bit about, I'm going to ask him a few questions about this bike. As you can see, it's pretty awesome. Unfortunately, we're not going to be starting this thing up today, uh, but we got some cool photos for you. This thing is going straight to the Mecham auction. This video will probably come out after it's over. We're thinking this thing's worth somewhere between 10 and 15, 20 yeah, grand. Yeah, so who knows? True. So uh, the price has been getting really high on a lot of these bikes because there's, there's not very many of them that look like this out there. So Norm, tell us about this thing, uh, how you picked it up first. Let's start there how you picked up the bike, how long you had it, and so look, kind of that first story. I just got it earlier this year. At, it was Gary and I are working on, Gary Chaplin and I are working on making a actual Trans Am copy of his 1973 Trans Am race bike. Okay. And we were at Legends and Heroes at the first Paula National this year. We saw it there, Randy Scott, a gentleman I used to race three wheelers at the Mickey Thompson Grand Prix with against he had this on display for a friend of his name, Mark, and he said, yeah, it's for sale if you're looking for a bike for Gary. Well, talked to Gary. Gary really wasn't exactly what Gary wanted because Gary wanted to start and make a work-style bike. Yeah. So this was 100% original, very low hour, maybe 10 to 15 hours. <laughs> original Metzlers were on it, everything, but it was that, what do I call it, pumpkin orange? Yeah. I'm not real fond of. Yeah. So we worked out a deal with it, picked it up. So we've only been working on this bike this bike starts to finish as you see it is less than eight weeks that's amazing yeah so a lot of our builds on bikes that even need less time than this are a lot longer than that yeah uh, but we're busy riding too i don't think you've been riding well, a lot this summer if you've been working too been, too, been too hot right <laughs> so the problem is it would have been done three weeks sooner the chrome it's so hard to get good chrome in california chrome shop had the wheels for wheels and handlebars for three weeks to get that original so you didn't have to buy aftermarket oh, stuff? Oh, no. The, every, nut, every major part in this motorcycle, they're the original Rodelli wheels. And do we, we have a picture. You, you have some pictures of before you started, yes. right? Let, we'll put those into the video right here so you can see how this thing looked when he got it. And, you know, when you, one of the things we like to look for, even if we're buying 80s or 90s bikes, is that everything's there. You know, that it's not missing some, some stuff that's going to be tough and crazy to find. The worst thing that was not correct on this bike was the fork boots and had later aftermarket fork boots on it. And it had a really, really ugly yellow number plate on the front. <laughs> yeah. But for the most part, and you know, the typical big numbers stuck on the side box and stuff like this. Yeah. But since Gary Chaplin used to race these things, him and I have been teaming up to build all these things. And all the detail on this work is thanks to Gary because he knows what goes where, what's most wrong. You know, like there's some places nylocks are not supposed to be where regular right. nuts are supposed to be. Gary's got all that in his head and his knowledge, so that's why we did this. And as you see the bike now, the only thing that is not original is the Preston Petty handle grips on it. They are exactly era correct. They were built back then. Right. Uh, but Paul Stander from Preston Petty, such a good friend of ours, he helps us out with all of our builds. And what are some other cool key features you did? I know you do your own paintwork and so forth. So tell us about the tank and anything else you uh, worked on as far as painting. The fiberglass is not in bad shape. There's a couple little spider web cracks, you know, typical gel coat cracks for the age. Heck, the thing's, you know, what, 30, 40 years old. So we got, did a little bit of work. I've got about maybe 12 hours in fiberglass and paintwork in it. Uh, but I, one thing I did do is I sealed the inside of the gas tank. It did not leak, but the new ethanol gas destroys the 60s and 70s fiberglass. Okay. So I went ahead and used a Pour 15 tank sealer inside of it just so if, it, if anybody ever does want to put the new modern gas, it won't destroy right. the fiberglass. Um, the motor, Gary checked the motor out. Top end was like brand new and its cross hatches were still there. Uh, this thing was just unbelievable. In fact, we brought it home. Um, Cody Shock and I were at the house and we were set there, threw some gas in it, tickled the carburetor before we tore it apart, tickled the carburetor. Within the fifth kick, it fired right up and woke up half the neighborhood. <laughs> Runs really good. Uh, we will fire it and do a firing video before we take it to the auction. Okay, cool. But the thing is, I don't want to have a setting around gas and anything else because we, we are hope to, to de debut it with Gary's works replica. And, and we're doing a Honda with Cody. We want to uh, uh, reveal them at uh, Scotty Burns with Carl's Bad Raceway Museum. A okay. Re reunion. Okay. And when, when's that going to be? That's this fall. Uh, it's the day after Paula, so it's September 4th. Oh, that's soon. Yeah. And we're doing a replica of Billy Urban's exact 
factory uh, poop that he raced. Well, we'll look forward to showing you guys those bikes as well as, yeah. we, go, as we go. Okay, so uh, notice the cases and everything, and the cylinder and cylinder head, carb, everything looks amazing. It looks like you did some vapor blasting. Yes, we vapor blasted the entire engine. Uh, we did not vapor blast the carburetor. We only ultrasound cleaned it. Okay. Because Bing's always had that little raw, darker look to it. Yeah. We didn't want it to look like all monochrome. Right. You know, so we did that. Um, the fork legs are something that Gary and I came up with a little bit different. Mako's were not... I have a tendency when I restore bikes, I like to put a lot of bling and shiny in them. Yeah. Well, Gary kind of pulled me back and said, no, their Mako's were rough. So if you notice, the fork legs, everything came out as a forge. So everything is smoother and stuff like a forge part. Yep. But most guys, when they do Mako's or Botacos, they make everything real, all the aluminum really shiny and diamond-like. Yeah. Well, the whole idea was to make... The whole reason this bike is being built was we wanted to be able to display it next to Gary's Works bike to see what you could buy in 1971 off the showroom floor mm -hmm. and then walk three feet next to it and see Gary's factory replica so they could see the differences. Very cool. So that's the main reason we started this whole project. Well, we're looking forward. And did you paint your, your frame as well? Uh, no, I did powder coat the frame. Powder coat, okay. I can, I mean, since I'm a painter, I can do all that. Right. But we have a guy up there. Uh, Ranch Cucamonga, Justin Martin at Concept Powder Coating. Okay. He's been sponsoring our race car team for the last seven years. He's, he does all of our powder coating. Okay. And so by the time I buy the material, yeah. it's right. done. It looks amazing. So it looks it has a high gloss to it on, on the frame. And the other black parts look really nice. Seat cover, who, who, who does that? We have a gentleman at PRP Race Car Seats. Yeah, oh yeah. In uh, yeah. Uh, California. Yeah. Uh, Victor Senior is his name. He does all their custom design work for their for their new auto, new products, and my wife works there, so he does our seats for us. And the seaming, the piping, everything is about as close as you could get to what it was. Right, just looking at the pictures yeah. and try, trying to line it up. Anything else difficult for guys if they're going to restore one of these? What are some of the difficult things they're going to have to find, or the the problems they're going to have in restoring one of these well, bikes? Well, I was really lucky because this bike was, was, was so good, yes, right? Yes. Uh, one thing that, you have to, that I've learned through Gary and some other people, uh, there's different engine cases available for these early models. If you notice, most people think this is a 73, 72 or 73 motor because it's got the later, uh, smaller, both sides smaller engine cases where the other ones were called watermelon cases, the big round shiny ones. Okay. Um, but we've actually got a brochure, the K model brochure from 1971 that shows these cases on a 71 showroom bike. Okay. So that's, so this bike is correct. Some people say it's got the wrong cases, other people, you know, but we have the bro proof of the brochure showing it's not. Very cool. And um, the, the, how are these bikes back to right? You know, I, sh I guess I should ask Gary this, huh? We should rope him yes, in here. Yes, I would like to bring Gary in. All right, let's, Gary let's, let's, bring, let's bring Gary in. Come on in, Gary. So we'll bring Gary in, and we're going to talk a little bit about, because I was only like three, you know, four. Cody wasn't born, but I was, I was at least uh, born. So, <laughs> all right, Gary. So you raced these things back in the early 70s. What, what do you think of these things in 71 up through, so did you ride one in 71, 72? Yeah, my first Mako I, I bought myself in 71. It was a 400. This is a 250, but everything identical to it. Okay. And then how long did you guys, did you ride these things? Well, I rode that. I, I think I bought that just the beginning of summer, and I rode it um, through to, till the Trans Am started. And Frank Cooper was the distributor. He built a 250 engine for me and Tim Hart, and uh, we just swapped motors in my bike and went off on the Trans Am, and, and we did pretty good. We got first and second in the series. That's awesome. That's awesome. What what'd you like about these bikes back then? You know, these bikes were um, incredible steering, uh, and then the forks suspension worked way far better than most of the other bikes. But, yeah, the steering, everyone, they, they couldn't argue about the steering. Um, and the shock setup, you would put Coney D shocks on it, a little adjustable. The Coney's were the way to go yeah. just about on all the bikes back then. And other than that, my, um, my 71 was, uh, was pretty much all stock, do you except remember, for the motor. And then what would you do to the motor? Just a little, little <laughs> well, I didn't build the motor. I was 19 at the time. Yeah. But, uh, they stuffed the crank, yep. uh, just cork, yep. boxy, I'm and uh, they widened up the exhaust. They, they didn't really raise anything, just got more torque out of it. Yeah. Tim's bike and my bike were probably the fastest out of all the guys, you know, and we had, you know, we had a lot of good riders, Tom Rapp, Bull Taco guy, and Dick Mann, kind of a famous guy, and Dave Aldana, and 
few guys like that, but our bikes are usually faster than the Boltacos and the Osas and, yeah. and all those bikes. So um, just a little porting work. I think they raised the compression. And Who, Who'd you um, work with back then on the motor, you think? You know, I, um, I really can't remember his name. Frank Cooper was the distributor for these bikes in okay. Los Angeles. Okay. And he was a West Coast distributor. And um, he had a guy that, that built the motors for us. Do you remember how much these cost back in 71? Um, man, I, I think I paid around just over a thousand dollars. A thousand bike, yeah. So that was a good chunk back then. Yeah, I mean, that was a decent amount. Uh, so anyway, really cool. And we're gonna catch up with you again when we get get to see that '73 bike that you're working on. So we'll catch up with you again. And uh, it's really been cool visiting with Gary and Norm. Hopefully you enjoyed this bike. Uh, it's a pretty cool looking bike. And uh, if you guys watch that auction, maybe you've seen it on there. So it'll be cool. So anyway. Check out our other videos, like, uh, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff. We'll see you later on the next one.